today on the movie we we have a first and i'm not talking about a time where i'm gonna let my guest talk a lot more than i do that's not happening i'm an egomaniac i like the sound of my own voice <laughs> we actually have our first international guest joining us on zoom she is an actress starring in her first leading role she is the daughter of two of the most iconic people in hollywood marvel's clark Gregg and dirty dancing's jennifer gray <laughs> now if you said to me stella I think of these like god awful warm beers that we used to take to every house party. Uh, gives me like flashbacks. And if you said to me, Greg, I think of oh, Greg's chicken bakes, which, by the way, I think are like one of my five a day. But if you put the two together, you get Stella Greg. And that's who I'm chatting to right now on Zoom. Hi. That was the worst link I've ever said. Awful introduction. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing very well, thank you. What time is it right now where you are? It's 11 a.m. Oh, no, I'm so sorry for what I've done. Why? Is that not like a horrible time to be on and start doing promo? No. I mean, you think it's late or early? Fair point. I think that just shows how ridiculously lazy I am. I mean, I get up at like 7 a.m. That is disgusting. Wow. I know. I know. I'm, I'm crazy like that. I know. No, you getting up at that time actually explains why you're successful <laughs> but how is life treating you good good very exciting and busy with the movie release coming out on saturday so that's very thrilling but yeah can you believe we actually get to say this this is your first leading role how like wild is that talk to me about day one on set how did you feel i think it was really interesting because i felt a little bit of pressure going into it not imposed by anyone but myself but to prove that casting someone that hadn't done something before as the lead wasn't a mistake. And also being children of actors, I wanted to prove that I deserved to be there and that I had put in the work. And so I prepared like I've never prepared before, got very little sleep that week and showed up and learned everyone's names and just was on it and that was really really I think that pressure honestly really helped drive me and led me to success and like starting with momentum for the rest of the film as soon as you said I get little sleep I was like oh god like she she usually wakes up at seven what time is she waking up for this like you're you're my hero I think not gonna lie <laughs> No, it, honestly, the call times weren't that bad when we were filming. Um, I'd say like a lot of the time it'd be like 9 a.m., 10 a.m. usually, which is really manageable. So I'd like have time to shower and like breakfast. And sometimes I did yoga before. Like I really. Yeah, you're just showing off at this point. <laughs> That's me. It's funny. When I got the email come through saying like, do you want to interview Stella Gregg for he slid into her DMs? I was like, yeah, you know what, sure thing, that'd be cute. Like a little cutesy, cheesy rom-com, he slid into her DMs, order in love. Oh, no, it, it was not that. You yeah. go through it in this. So, like, how did you no. uh, unwind off set? I think that it was really intense because I remember all the, like, stunt days and kind of the attack scenes we did all in one day, um, which is not ideal, but I was kind of forced to hyperventilate the entire day just because I had to just be on it and in it and I mean it worked because I was really in like fight or flight the whole day because of that but it was I had to we were would go from take to take and I would be hyperventilating so much that I would get quite dizzy and as a people pleaser I was like Oh, I don't want to ask to like take five minutes. I don't want to ask to like have some time for myself. But I finally was just like, can I just have five minutes to just like take some deep breaths and just like have some water? And I'm really glad that I did and advocated for myself. Well, I'm glad you did. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't be doing this interview right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not all doom and gloom, though, is it? Those were the hardest days. But what were the your best days, your best memories from this film? I think it's really interesting because like doing the, the scenes where I'm influencing and, you know, like filming myself 
doing content was easy, but at the same time, I wasn't reacting to anyone. So it felt kind of, I'm just kind of throwing it out there and hoping it lands. Um, but it's also interesting because I'm doing, I'm, I have to have a purpose for every single thing that I am doing when I'm performing that and to have an intention and objectives and know what I want from a scene without someone else in it was a little tricky for me at first. But once I got the hang of it, I was kind of just rolling with it. Fair play to you. Because I think if you said to me, what would be the hardest role for you to do? It would be me like trying to be a likable influencer, like doing the like, hey, guys, like and subscribe. I, I just can't do it. I can't do it. And it was interesting because I actually, I keep saying it was interesting. It was so interesting. All of it. So interesting. Um, I actually filmed all of the, like, all of the, like, iPhone footage on my actual iPhone. Oh, how funny. Yeah. And so at the end of the day of each, like, production day, I would, like, airdrop all of the content that I had, like, the videos that I had taken on my personal phone. How many times did you accidentally send, like, cute pictures of dogs or, like, funny memes that you had on your phone? Oh, not that many. I feel like I was, like, maybe, like, once, probably. Only once. Because I was, like, this guy, the, the tech guy needs a little something to just boost his day. You really are a hero. For sure. For sure. Now, the title of this film inspired me, and I went on a, a deep dive of Reddit to find Perfect. some, like the harrowing lines that people have used when they slide in the DMs. Mm. So I'm going to give you three, and I just want you to rate them for me out of 10. I love it. Yeah, amazing. So first one, do you work for UPS? Because I saw you checking out my package. I'd say that one's like a three. Savage. Because because I think that it's, you're just, you're going way too far for the junk way too fast. <laughs> well, then you are going to be very disappointed in the following two. Oh, I'm so excited. Perfect. Are you a sea lion? Because I can see you lying in my bed tonight. That one I think is a two. Oh, wow. No, they're getting worse. Yeah. I mean, well, who knows about the third one? Who knows about the third one? So this one, I'm, I'm personally in like negative figures on this one. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Are you a drill sergeant? Because you have my private standing at attention. I don't hate that one, to be honest. What? I might say that that's like a six. Wow. Yeah, buckle up. Yeah. Before we go any further, I have to admit they're not from Reddit. These are lines that you've used. <laughs> I wish, I wish I was as creative as that. <laughs> These are all lines that I've heard your dad, Clark Gregg, saying. No, they're not. What? No, they're not. Oh, yeah. From where? What context? He he was in an interview where he used all three of these lines. Wow. Just like that, a chill rushed down my spine. Um, that is crazy. <laughs> that is bonkers. Um, I will say he is a phenomenal writer and has the most incredible mind. And so I give it up to him for the niche things of it all. But it's a little, it's a little too forward into the dms i feel like potentially uh, to be fair you gave his lines there like an average of like four four and a half like, yeah. that's a good score yeah. he can't be mad at you like i think when you're doing it you kind of have to do it a little bit mysteriously like look what the cat dragged in kind of thing where you're where it gets their attention but you're not giving them you got to bait them a little bit you are a smoothie like i think i met my wife like messenger like hello you are pretty bye <laughs> but that's old-fashioned that's simple less is more you know? Well, it got this guy a wife, so... <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I hated that. I don't know why I did the, the double thumbs up to myself. I'm like, who, who am I? Why have I done that? I liked it. I liked it. So you play a social media influencer in He Slid Into Her DMs, which, you know, as we've mentioned, you've got some experience in. How, how hard is it getting your dad involved in making TikToks? I mean, we haven't really done them since COVID. It was genuinely I was in my senior year of high school when COVID happened so second semester senior year I didn't get to go to prom I didn't get to have graduation all that stuff so my makeshift way of having some fun and being creative was just using what I had which was 
my dad's presence in front of me and knowing that he was just going to be quirky. And I just was making them honestly, just for my friends only. And then my friends were like, this is so interesting that you have to like, let people see this side of him because he plays such serious roles and to show that range because he's just such, this is going to sound so weird, but like, he's just such a silly goose. Like he's just such a silly goose. I'm so pleased you said silly goose. Not enough people in my interview say it. Oh, well, that's a problem. <laughs> would your dad be aware of the TikTok trends? Well, it's interesting. He would like, there I go again, saying it to not hold back. This is pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Um, Yeah, he would, during COVID, I mean, I think all of us were just kind of, all right, now what do we do? Watching the news is going to be a lot. I've already found my hobby. I did watercoloring for like three weeks. Now what? And I'm just scrolling on TikTok. And then he would find them. And he's like, should we do this? And I'm like, you want to you learn that whole dance? By all means. By all means. So he brought it to you? There were a lot of times that he would, yeah. This is blowing my little mind. Yeah. I had, to, I had to rope him in, but once he got, once he kind of got the hang of it, I think he, it was, it's like caffeine. Like you kind of, once you get a taste, you're like, I kind of need this every day. I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but that genuinely was pretty interesting. <laughs> right? Right? I agree. Yeah. I also found out something fascinating about this film. He slid into her DMs. So it's actually a biopic about how Rachel Zegler slid into your DMs. Not my words, but the words of Rachel Zegler. I love that. No, unfortunately, I don't even know how we met, honestly. I think that we, she followed my dad and then followed me. And then we just started randomly commenting on each other's photos. And then we were like, wait, should we hang out? And then she came to LA and we hung out for like seven hours. and just had girl talk went to get coffee hung out and she's so wonderful i'm like i don't get to see her that much because she lives in new york and she's obviously very busy but i am such a huge fan of her she is just the most phenomenal human being and always so warm and kind never has not shown up for me see i kind of want to be a part of this friendship now so if you do have another meet up drop me a dm yeah of course yeah, I'll slide into your DMs, but like in a in a platonic way. Yeah, don't use any of your dad's lines. It's quite a like weird, blurry situation we've got ourselves in. I think that's already messy enough as it is. I can't believe I had to say don't use your dad's chat up lines. I'm gonna have to find these interviews, to be honest, because I like it makes sense because he's so niche in that way. But I can't believe he would just say that in public. No, I will. I will genuinely send you a link to that interview. And while I'm at it, I will also send you a link to a good therapist because you will probably need one now. You actually, I'm already set. But maybe I just need like a revamp of one, perhaps. Maybe I have two therapists. Double header. Like, see, it's a lot seeing your dad flirt. Maybe some EMDR. Yeah. But no, let's go back to Rachel because I'm genuinely fascinated by this friendship. Like, what is a, a, a Stella and Rachel date like? I'm trying to think what we did. I think that we, she just came, I was, it was, I think, during, like, a, maybe a year after COVID. And so it was very much along the lines of, have you been tested? I've been tested. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. And kind of just sussing each other out. And then she, I was living with my mom still, and she came over and we, like, ordered lunch and just sat on the couch and talked for hours, um, which was really nice especially because I all my girlfriends had gone to college and I had decided to not go to college to focus on acting and studying the technique and all of that and so I talked to a lot of my best friends on FaceTime and stuff like that but I didn't have a lot of one-on-one -on -one in person girl time and it was so refreshing to have that and I loved it so much and we had a really really fantastic bond where we never met before and all of a sudden we just started talking like we have known each other for years. I genuinely want in on this friendship. Yeah, no, she's incredible and she's so talented and to be, I I think maybe because I'm an only child, I see, whenever I see my friends 
thriving and skyrocketing, whether it's in their career or any form of their life, I get like so into it because I'm like, I'm very much like a pack mentality kind of person because I don't have siblings that I consider like my friends, my my family, as cliche as that sounds. Um, but like the day that West Side Story came out, I watched it right away. Like I check, I text her like every few weeks and I'm like, hey, I'm really proud of you. That's it. Like We just kind of check in with each other, which is really wholesome. I actually want to cry. Like you're so pure. <laughs> As someone that, you know, wants to be best friends with Rachel Zegler, I need to know as much about her as I can. So I'm thinking, I'm going to quickfire 10 questions about Rachel Zegler. Can you immediately answer with the first thing that pops into your head? Okay. Okay, number one, what does Rachel smell of? Cashmere vanilla. Nice. What is Rachel's favourite food? She's. I've eaten a lot of different foods with her, I feel like. She, she can do it all. She's just got such a good palate. Yeah, she's that versatile. Yeah. Does Rachel like Taylor Swift? Yeah. Good answer. Who is Rachel's celebrity crush? Oh, oh, she's told me this before. I can even say it, though, because I think that, like, she, because she has a boyfriend. (laughs) That that is true. So I don't want to stir the pot like that. Her boyfriend is her celebrity crush. Exactly. You heard it here first time. That's what I was going to say. Because that is the only person she's ever fancied, ever. Um, how many push-ups do you think Rachel could do? Probably, like, 30, 35. Which is about 30, 35 more than I could ever do. She's she's very tenacious. True, true. you do not get Snow White, Shazam, Hunger Games, West Side Story by not being tenacious. Yeah, no. No, no, no. No. What is the most embarrassing thing Rachel's ever done? She's honestly really, really put together. Like, as much as I want to just be like, oh, she wants to do this one thing. I just, I can't, I can't think of anything like that because she's just so grounded and put together. And I'm not saying that to be like, I know that's a boring answer, but like, I, I wish I had something like to give you, but I really just don't. Um, I feel like it's just average, like, 20s, just, oh, I did this and, I felt stupid or whatever it was, or I, it was so embarrassing when I did this or whatever it is, but it was, it's not anything like that can immediately come to my mind. Not one part of me shocked that Rachel's perfect. Yeah. And her skin, like I've genuinely, I don't think I've ever seen skin that's as perfect and smooth as hers is. That was going to be my next question. I bet. How smooth is Rachel's skin? Right. I know. I know. But like, that's how I associate her put together. I'm like, wow. You're, I just know that your regime is just on it. No, I reckon she goes on set, like has like six and a half milliseconds in the makeup trailer and they're like, yeah, you're done. Next. Exactly. Exactly. If Rachel were to be a cartoon character, who would she be? My mind kind of goes to like an animal and I'm kind of thinking like some form of like Bambi, like a deer moment perhaps. And now she's in with Disney, so she could literally be live action Bambi. Yeah. I think that's, that's what I'm gravitating towards. She can eat anything. She can betray anything. Exactly. 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 What is Rachel absolutely rubbish at? This is really hard because, again, she's really put together. And again, I wish I had like a really fun, juicy answer, but I really don't. Um, well, she's not. She's not great at responding very timely. But then again, like in her defense, she is so busy, and when she does respond, she's like, "I'm so sorry, I didn't respond," and. She is one of the busiest young women in this age. So if she was really timely with answering texts, I would be a little bit confused, frankly. You should have just ran with it. Like, not give her the benefit of the doubt. Just bring her down to our sort of human level. (laughs) Yeah, totally, totally, totally. Finally, if Rachel could play anyone in a movie, who would she play? That's really tricky, actually. Um... Like a biopic kind of thing, or no? You decide. We're we're producers on this. She she can even play you in the movie of your life. I'd love that. That would be so fun. Um, I'd honestly love to see her play my mom. Great shout. Yeah, I feel like that'd be really interesting. Should we hang up and just write this script now? Should we make this happen? Well, you know a lot about Hollywood and like getting movies made and produced. I can just be there. Yeah, yeah. We'll have your name on the credits. Yeah. 
No, it's very much a vanity title, this. I, d I don't care. Like, I like to do no work and get, l like, loads of credit. Of course. Of course. Humility. Well, we spoke about Rachel's next role, which is your mum. But, like, what's next for you? What would be a dream role for you to take on? I'm honestly, I'm just a sucker for really great writing. To me, that is kind of, I'm not, oh, I really want to do this or I really want to do this. If it's great writing, I'm honestly just really smitten with that. I have this fantasy of doing like a Russian spy kind of moment, especially because I'm quite short and I look quite young. And so the juxtaposition of that and like a Russian spy assassin or whatever, I think would be really, really fun to work with. Do you want me to write that once I've written your mum's biopic? Will you? Yeah, now I've got time. Oh. Just take it off my chest. As I said, I don't wake up till about 4 p.m. But after that, I'm in the zone. I am writing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a role that I think we would both like to see you do. And that is Hermione Granger. <gasps> I love that. I love that. I'm a huge Harry Potter person. No, I saw the I saw the poem you wrote as a kid. Lyrical masterpiece, by the way. I'm going to read some of my favourite lines. Of course. Go ahead. If I were Hermione Granger, I would plan ways to kill Lord Voldemort. If I were Hermione Granger, I would make my cat speak to me and do cool cat tricks. If I were Hermione Granger. That's, that's moving. And that was even before I was obsessed with Harry Potter. Like, I'm, that is by far my favorite franchise. I've probably seen every single movie over 15 times. How do you get anything else done? I just, if it's a rainy day, I'm not watching anything else. It's true. Like, it's just... And if it's fall, winter, anything, I'm like, well, I have to watch it. I have to. Okay, no, like, let's actually pitch this. Who do you want to play if we were to get you in the HBO remake? I mean, obviously, the easy answer is Hermione. Um, but I think that I would want to do something that I, people normally wouldn't expect. So Hagrid? Right. Like, really throw people for a loop. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. Okay, so I've got to get your mum's biopic done, your spy movie done, and get you in the Harry Potter franchise. Mm -hmm. We have an itinerary. Seems easy. Easy to do. Tomorrow, I'll drop you a DM, say it's all booked. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I can't believe I'm saying this, Stella, but that is it. That is our time done together. Thank you so, so much for chatting to me, and apologies for making you do promo today. It's such a silly time. Yeah, really. I Thank you. It means a lot. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This was really fun. Oh, thank you. And hopefully I get to speak to you about your next project, maybe even Harry Potter. Yes, I'd love that. That'd be so fun. Right, peace. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you.